Hello and welcome to the Revive Podcast. I'm Carrie, pastor of Connection and Discipleship here at Neighborhood Church. Thanks for joining us. Each week we create and curate all kinds of resources to help people thrive in Christ. All available at neighborhoodchurch.com slash revive. Psalm 138 verse 7 says this, Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. And that's what God does. He gives, sustains, recovers, repairs, and restores our life. So our prayer is these weekly articles, videos, messages, discussions, and this podcast will give you hope, strength, and joy in Jesus. So today we're going to be diving into Psalm chapter 1 at the very beginning of the book of Psalms. Let's read it first together, and then we'll dive into talking all about what God is saying through this passage. So I'm here in Psalm chapter 1 starting in verse one says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. So here in our episode today, we are joined by a couple great guests. Uh, First of all, we've got our lead pastor, Pastor Mike McKay. Mike, say hello. Hello, everyone. Good to have you, Mike. And we're also joined by Justin, our campus pastor from the branch in Los Al. Justin, good to have you. Good to be here. All right, pastor of branching. We are good to go. And we also have Terry. Our, uh, what is your title, Terry? It's, uh, it's rather long. Mike gave it to me, though. But it's executive associate pastor and coach. Woo! Man, I figured it'd be better to have you say it than have me mess it up. Is yeah, that, but that it's, fair? it's long, but very meaningful. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> That's why I get paid the big bucks. That's nice. a long title. And you're it's well kind of a, it, 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 and he didn't have to write a job description either. It's all in the title. Yeah, so. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> well, with a title like that, we definitely wanted to have Terry weigh in on this passage. Uh, it may also be due to the fact that he preached this passage just last Sunday. So he probably has some insights to share with us today. <laughs> Well, it's good to have all you guys here. Thanks for joining us. Um, We just want to dive right in here to Psalm 1 and hear some insights maybe that you've got from studying this passage and getting to teach it. Um, Just to start off, I wanted to ask the question, what what is a psalm? Why were they written and why should we care? Well, I'll go ahead and start out with this, uh, Carrie, in that, you know, Psalms is an incredible book. It is a compilation of poems and uh, songs and uh, writings from a number of uh, Old Testament authors. And they've been compiled together to what we have is in the book of Psalms. And the book of Psalms is, is divided up. It's divided up into separate different books, five of them uh, that way. And, and uh, you can look on some of the resources there and look back, I think, at the study guide for January 10th. And you'll see some notes in there about how the books are divided and what were their, their intents and some examples for that. But it's a great book of, song, of, of songs. Um, some we, we kind of have never really understood what the music is, but there's been other organizations that have put things together and it's been wonderful. Some of our hymns have come out of there, uh, traditional hymns, but that's in a nutshell what the Bible book of Psalms has within it. And it has so much great content. I'll let the other guys kind of talk about some of that. Mm, that's great. Anything else you guys want to say? Kind of Yeah, I mean, general? I think... Um... Yeah, I, I, the thing that I tapped into introducing uh, the message on Sunday was just how we've this last year has been pretty grueling in a lot of ways, um, and and even you know even into twenty twenty one is not off to a stellar start either, um, and yet mm-hmm. we the the Psalms they have this amazing breadth of. Um, 
they allow us to plumb the, de- the breadth of our emotions and the depth. So they speak to a lot of pain. They speak to suffering. They speak to joy, you know? And so even in terms of turning the corner from 2020 to 2021, some of the desire to go through the Psalms, at least for a little while was to um, kind of lift our eyes and both give voice to the pain, but also to remind us there's a bigger story and to give joy and hope and, and the realization that God is in the good and the bad and, and throughout the whole process. And so I think that's, uh, that's, I think a, a huge value is it, it can correct us and affirm us at the same time or as needed because it covers so broadly. So, yeah. Um, and I, and I would just uh, continue to add to that is that it, it they're not just, um, uh, they're songs that instruct. I think Justin mentioned some of that, and he uh, and and they they help us emote. They put words to feelings. You, know, you think of David when he says, "I'm feeling like I'm in a pit," and a lot of us have felt that in the struggles that we've gone through and the issues that we've dealt with. It's, you know, they they just give us some words to say, "Yes, that's how I feel," and brings the emotional reality of the of our intellect and emotions together to be able to walk through. They're also great opportunities to put words to our worship that we may not have god is you know ex- ex- uh, exalted and 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 high and lifted up and his uh, you know he understands our thoughts from afar very personal as psalm 139 talks about and just uh, and there's so much packed into this book and uh, it's it's an incredible incredible book yeah with 150 what? chapters we definitely have a lot packed in there to to explore this is going to be a good series uh terry are you going to say something too uh, one of the things I appreciate about the book of Psalms is um, it doesn't hold back the things that have already been mentioned uh, about emotions and putting words to our emotions. Uh, there's some of the Psalms that David gets pretty, pretty terse about. And yet, and sometimes it's even, it's even um, stated to, to, not to God, but towards God in almost a hard way, but yet I think if I'm not mistaken, all but two of the Psalms end up with understanding and realizing again, who God is, what his role is and what our role is. But I, I appreciate the, the, the depth and the, the hardness of the emotions that are expressed sometimes. Yeah, and raw, just the raw. raw. That's the word, yes, yeah. raw. Yeah, good to have. It's pretty remarkable that Psalms can, the authors of so many of them were able to express such the, uh, what was really going on in their hearts. And it's not just a cleaned up version ready for Sunday morning, but it's really what's going on. And they're expressing it honestly to God, either praise or lament. Um, And Father God wanted them included in the the inspired version. So here we are. Yeah. For sure. Here we are reading them as God's word today. Yeah, good points, you guys. It's uh, This is going to be a great series. And man, diving into Psalm 1, particularly, as we look at the first one kind of kicking off the whole book, um, I'd love to ask you guys, you know, we did hear from you guys on Sunday in the sermon. And for any of our listeners out there in podcast land, um, you can listen to the full sermon from each of our campuses uh, we'll have our Los South campus and our Cypress campus on our website and on our podcast as well. You can go back and get the full uh, money there. But now uh, we want to kind of explore, were there some things that you guys as teachers felt like, oh, you know, I just didn't quite have time to include this, but it was really relevant to Psalm 1? Or here's something I think God was really trying to say through Psalm 1. And, uh, I, you know, there just wasn't time to tease it out, but it's really still relevant for us today. What do you guys think about that? I was looking over my study notes just in preparation for this um, because I'm already preparing for the next one. So I went back and just refreshed and, and saw some things that didn't make it in. And one that one that I thought was good and it, it kind of connects to what we've just, just mentioned uh, It's from John Golden Gate's commentary. He says, Psalm one constitutes a preemptive strike with regard to much that will follow in the Psalter prayers issuing from the experience of each attack, shame, fear, isolation, divine abandonment and divine anger will dominate the first half of the Psalter. These prayers could give us the impression that such experiences are characteristic of the life of the godly 
the Psalter begins by affirming that this is not so. And I think that was a, I, I really, I'm, man, I wish I would have remembered that when I was preaching, because I think that's a good, it, it is very much a gateway um, in terms of to the whole Psalms and they get pretty dark at times, which is what we see as the value of it. But regardless of that, or maybe even because of that, um, that's why the, there's a definite, definite rootedness and strength to our faith and that God is even using those things to plant us deeply and grow deep roots and, and whatnot. And, and I think it helps to know the structure of the, the full book of Psalms to, to kind of gain some understanding. And I mentioned that before, and you again could look in the revised section and find that under the notes under um, January 10th. But, but it's uh, Psalm 1 and 2 really stand as an introduction to the entire book. Uh, and, and not just book one, two, three, but book all, all those books. And then the last five Psalms somewhat come as, as can be taken as a, as, a, uh, um, uh, as, a, as a conclusion to all of this. But Psalm 1 definitely opens up, and I, I think Terry explained it well. It just kind of gives an idea of kind of here, here when he gave his message uh, to talk about, you know, here is an, that, the, um, that the Psalms are set up to help us to, understand and to grow in God more and more. And so therefore we should meditate on them. Uh, that was what I focused on, Justin, was med uh, meditation. What did you focus on in your message? Uh, that was definitely my, my ultimate application point was that the need to do that. I mean, it was, that was the kind of crown jewel of it. Um, there was also the, the need to be, you know, watch the community we keep and then the Psalms by nature are prayer and praise. And so kind of really those building blocks of basic faith, but the meditation piece was uh, pretty central to that. Um, the, the one that I focused most on and, you know, with the new year's kicking in, it was, that's where I said, Hey, you know, this is a great time to get plugged into the Bible and do some of those things that sometimes we let slip. And, and really, that's such a critical piece. I didn't mention it because I probably mentioned it too much. But years ago, uh, Willow Creek did that kind of evaluation of what they're doing and how they're how they're doing as a church. And one of the I can't I think it was I don't know move was their their kind of here's how we're going to fix this. And and it was I always thought it was so um, instructive that the 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 single most significant way to measure whether someone's growing spiritually as if they're reflectively reading the Bible. And so, you know, so I, I, mm. I probably hit that too much, but probably can't hit it too much. And yeah. it's just uh, critical. So yeah, it was, it was that I didn't do too much of a how to um, just, you know, for lack of time, but, um, but a little bit of it more encouraging them, Hey, here's some resources and, and get to them. Did, how, how did you develop meditation um, or did you? Yes, I did. Um, that's in fact, I pretty much entirely focused on that. Um, one of the questions that came to my mind as I was preparing this, that I did not have the time to pursue either in the message or in the preparation was, what is it that we're to meditate on God's word or God? I don't know, maybe that's a heresy question. But most of the most of the passages, like Psalm 1-2 say, uh, a righteous man delights in the law, and on his law he meditates day and night. Uh, Joshua 1-8, same kind of thing, meditating on God's word. And I don't know, I'll just tell you where I come from with that. I, I understand that, but I think there's something to be said that there are times when it may be a good idea just to sit with Father God and uh, whether or not we're reading the word or whatever, I, I'm concluding that meditating on God's word is a means to understanding and appreciating and being in relationship with God. But there are times I think when we may need to just sit and enjoy that relationship rather than have to be have to read the word as a precursor. Yeah, and I would just, I, yeah, yes, absolutely. And I think that's a little bit inherent with the word delight. And I only was able to touch on it. And okay. I just did it. I just did the children's message, uh, five minute shot on that uh, at the Cypress campus, but it was, 
it, the idea behind delight, it, it, as I as, as I interpret that Hebrew word, is to is to really find joy and fun. It's it, it's a it's an active choice of that. You know, I I, I gave the illustration of, of of finding delight and joy in eating vegetables, which it wasn't my favorite at first, but it, but I began to make that choice in the same way that we make that choice to delve into into the uh, the the law as the scripture lays it out. You know, delight yourself in the law of the Lord. And, and that really is that law is meant to be a teacher to show us about God, about his mercy, his grace, his kindness, his goodness, all of that. And his and definitely his loving kindness His has said, as it is, that that we we need to sit and soak that in. And that's why I love the the, the word meditate. It's a uh, um, it's one of those uh, uh, sounding out words. It you know, kind of sounds like hmm, <laughs> like you would do that thinking through what what God is who God is and what he's like. And, and there's a number of Psalms that, that where David takes that as he, as he even likens God as a, you know, a strong tower or a, a, a mother uh, a shadow, the shadow of his wings. Um, there's, there's a number of things. And that actually that's in Psalm 92 is, is, is a number of very descriptive or excuse me, Psalm 91 is a number of descriptive views of God, which we'll be uh, doing in a couple of eight, couple of weeks in a sermon. So, that I think delight is a is one I would love to have seen us kind of delve more into if we had more time, and it's that choice to find joy in. You know, it's like when you first pick up a, a musical instrument and you have no idea how to play it. Uh, you're not. It's not fun. You know, your fingers start to bleed on the guitar. You're stretching your fingers for the piano. You're trying to blow through the windpipes. You're. you're it's just. It's painful, but. As you begin to keep making that choice, you find a delight in the music, a delight in that. And same thing with any craft or uh, a hobby or, um, and, and even in relationship. I mean, it, 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 you've, it, the, the growing delight of, of knowing somebody more is wonderful. I think so. I mean, I think if I had to say something that we hadn't said as much that on our time would be really focusing on delight, that it is a choice and we can find our delight in anything that we put our mind to. And so the, the, the author says, hey, if you want to be, you know, blessed are those, happy are those, those who have that internal sense of purpose and, and joy and, and deep, deep seated happiness, here's where it's found. It's founding in delighting in the law of the Lord and meditating on it day and night. Mm, I really like that illustration of, the in, of learning an instrument too, Mike, that, that joy is a choice and it's something that we develop in relationship to God. I, I, I'm sure the first year of me learning alto saxophone as a child was not a very joyful experience for my family to hear as I was practicing around the house. <laughs> yeah, certainly not your parents. <laughs> and I don't know if it was much of a joy for me as well, but, but later on it became a joy as, a, as it became more natural and I learned it. And what a good application for us today and that when we look at the world around us and the situations in our nation and our world, maybe even in our own homes, there are not uh, there are many circumstances that would not cause us naturally to feel joy right away. And yet there are still opportunities there for us to choose joy and learn how to find joy in the midst of those circumstances. So, yeah, that's good stuff. Uh, uh, Justin, you mentioned earlier the Psalter. Um, and just for our audience, I'm thinking, is that a guy who, a waiter who comes next to the pepper grinder guy and he just salts <laughs> your food for you? Is that that was a very Terry joke as he's the only one laughing. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, no, that's another name for all the Psalms. So uh, just the, the okay. Psalm book. So, but I wanted to go back to one of the things when Terry was asking about whether we, you know, uh, meditate on, on God or the scriptures. And I, and I don't, um, I think certainly we want to connect with God and often we do that through the scriptures. And I think, the value of putting the scriptures centralized um, in that is that that gives us shape into knowing who God is and uh, and to, to thinking and connecting with him rightly. Like I, I remember meeting years ago with a guy and he was very spiritually minded. And so we had great dialogue and he had great a great spiritual sense about him, but sometimes it was untethered. And so I would keep bringing him back to the scripture and I, and he appreciated that. We still, still talk often. And he's very grateful for those dialogues of the scripture then keeps him tethered to who God is as God's revealed himself uh, less so than um, 
it just gives us some grounding to our meditation that makes it um, that keeps it true. So it's shaped by what God has revealed, not the culture, not ourselves or what whatever we're into at this time, because we can be pretty flighty one way or another, but but really grounds us in that so that we know we're engaging truly with God. So um, so I think it's a it's an avenue to connect with God, but to do so truly on his terms. Mm, that's great. And I think it's a good thing to, to hear about your conversation with a, a guy that you knew, Justin, that, you know, we read these passages and we, we hear the contrast in Psalm 1 between the descripted righteous person and the wicked. But then, you know, how do we really put meditating on God's word into practice? How do we do this? How do we find joy? Um, what does it look like practically to do that? Is there anything you guys would, as we wrap up to kind of speak to that or ways that you've found that have been uh, helpful? Just show up. If, if meditation is actually an invitation, if it's a request that Father God wants to be in relationship with us, then I would suggest if we just show up, dedicate a few minutes or 10 minutes or whatever, a half hour, whatever it takes, uh, if we show up, then he'll meet us. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Terry. I would yeah. add to I would add to that um, to to have a plan and make a plan, but don't be a slave to your plan. And yes. what I mean by that is, I am I am great at checking boxes. I am a modern day Pharisee. I've got a list, and I always read my Bible, but I don't always meet with Jesus in it. And so yeah. that I think is the critical piece. Is you know, and back to your point, connecting with Father God, Terry, not just going through the paces and there's not going to be an epiphany as we're recording on epiphany. There's not going to be an epiphany every time, but it is um, a um, there, there's something going through it, something valuable about just going through it. But if it's always just going through it, then something's missing and you need to, to, to use that time to engage. So. Agreed. Mm, good. Any last thoughts there, Mike, as well? Yeah, I just, I, you know, I want to say that it, it, it's, you know, the, the, the psalm as an introduction, it, it does set the course for what you want to do through the, the each book, each uh, chapter of the books of psalms and, and do that. And, you know, it's, it's I think the, the one piece about this is I love how it gives a metaphor of the tree firmly planted by streams of living water and it produces its fruit. And fruit is meant to, yes, look beautiful on a tree. But one of the benefits of fruit is for the people who come and pick it and eat it and take it in and that we become in community better people as we interact with other people, as we are med- delighting ourselves in the law of the Lord and meditating on it day and night, then we will be a blessing to those around us because we'll be oozing out the, the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. We'll be doing it and that will be a blessing in community. And so, I mean, this all through the Psalms, you know, we're going to be better people as we continue to meditate and delight ourselves in. Awesome. Love that. And good attached to Galatians 5. Like, yeah, it, these are things that are permeated throughout scripture. Man, it's just, this has been so great. This has flown by. Thank you so much, Mike, Justin, Terry, for joining us here on the Revive podcast today. Um, thank you uh, once again for all your insights there. And thank you listeners for joining us as well here on the Revive Podcast. If you found this episode helpful, go ahead and share it with a friend. Uh, and for a lot of other resources, some that we mentioned here, others that we've mentioned in other places, check out again, neighborhoodchurch.com slash revive. You can also find us at Facebook and Instagram. You can find our Neighborhood Church of Cyprus YouTube channel. And you can also subscribe to this podcast uh, so you can keep reviving your soul, finding hope and finding answers each week. Subscribe to us on iTunes or wherever you find your podcast so you'll never miss an episode. Or you can contact me with any questions at carry at neighborhoodchurch.com. See you next time.